Hey, this is Melina, and I hope this is recording. Uh, is it? Yes. Hi. Uh, so this is Melina, and I'm doing a web thing because I'm too lazy to type. And I can say many more words this way than I can if I'm actually uh, typing. So I'm a crappy typist. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm... Um, I'm doing this, uh, I think I probably have, I have no idea what the fuck I'm going to talk about, but I think I probably want to talk first about my recent trip to, um, <laughs> to Fusion, uh, which was a camp, um, up at an undisclosed location that everybody knows about in the, uh, kink and freak friendly campground somewhere in the place that's secret. Anyway, uh, I went to this camp and, uh, interestingly I had, um, really only planned on doing one scene in particular. And uh, the type of scene I wanted to do was something that was unusual for me, which is a scene in which um, I safe worded. And for those who don't know, if you are doing kinky stuff, you typically tend to have a safe word or just a way to stop the scene so that if you as the bottom are having a problem or an issue of freaking out, you can say, you know what, this is too much and I need to stop it. Um, I have this uh, not uncommon problem where I uh, feel like it's a failing if I stop the scene um, rather than let the, the top or the dominant or whoever is running the scene say, I've had enough, let's stop now. Um, I'm having a lot of issues around personal boundaries and maintaining safe space for myself and when to say no um, versus, uh, uh, versus pushing myself um, in order to please other people. So I thought this might be a nice way to have a physical reminder of that. And I asked my friend Gray to uh, to help uh, in this scene uh, by beating the shit out of me, you know, I, not shit, it wasn't to be that kind of scene, um, but I asked him to do this scene, and we talked about it uh, a couple weeks ago, and then um, I found a couple of friends to do aftercare, which basically means, you know, mop up duty after the scene if someone's upset or someone's freaking out, or someone just needs, you know, some hand-holding or whatever, um, someone who would be there for that, and... Um, uh, to their surprise, I listed two friends of mine who were not themselves very much into aftercare, um, who shall remain nameless, um, unless they want to be named, in which case you can comment here and then, you know, whatever. Um, I actually mentioned it on Twitter, so fuck it. It's my friend Ava and Misha and Sharon B, who, being female switches, are at the top of the food chain of evil in the hierarchy, if there were to be such a thing, but there isn't, of evil. So... Um, they sort of were puzzled and said, uh, okay, sure, we'll do it because, you know, we love you and all that shit, but odd choice. And I said, yes, odd choice. <laughs> um, the thing about uh, picking people who are switches, who are really sadistic um, and yet care about you, to watch you do a scene that's probably going to be difficult to watch is that I knew that for them, no matter how rough and ugly it looked, they would be uh, in a place to understand my reasons, my rationale, and wouldn't bring sort of like freaked out energy to the whole proceeding. So, um, long story short, we got to uh, the camp and we're in this, um, like a battle cage kind of thing, like a Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome kind of, you know, two go in, one goes out sort of deal. Um, probably about like, you know, five, six, ten feet long, maybe by six feet across. Uh, it wasn't very big. Uh, perhaps it was larger than that. My sense of dimensional space is kind of wonky, remembering this. Um, and uh, Gray had put up along the in the chain link all these fucked up implements of mass destruction and weapons and whatnot. Um, and uh, so we're talking, and he's like, oh, we're going to start the scene, blah, blah, blah. And usually there's like a warm-up or something. And in this case, he just, like, out of nowhere slapped the fuck out of me across the face, literally to the point where I blinked and, like, saw little black spots in front of my head going wow, this is going to be short, you know, I, at that point I knew, you know, if he's starting it at, at this level, which was acceptable, um, but if he's starting at this level, it's probably going to be really too much for me to take fairly quickly, uh, which is, which is fine, you know, but it was, it was kind of startling to me, um, and, uh, he then proceeded to do a lot, uh, he tied me up to the fence, and hit me with, like, a stick and a single tail and this really incredibly fucked up toy. It's like a stiffened, twisted leather suede thing. It's like a cat of nine tails, but 
so much worse. It's possibly the the, the nastiest whip I've ever experienced, um, and uh, I hate it. I hate it passionately. Uh, um, and he hit me with that uh, for a long time. What was interesting was that there were a couple of times when I made a conscious decision to say, you know what, I'm just going to unplug. I'm going to get out of this scene and go to a happy place in my head till this is over, you know, and stop screaming and start crying and stop crying and just was like, la, 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 la. Um, And since I'm pretty easy to read during scenes, uh, it was obvious to him that this is what I was doing. And so he uh, started yelling at me, which is a big deal, yelling at me during a, yelling at me at all puts me into a very weird and vulnerable headspace, so yelling at me during a scene uh, is is really tough, uh, really difficult. Um, and uh, as the scene went on, I kept bouncing back and forth between not knowing if I should say for it, and, and I kept thinking, you know what, he's hitting me with this awful thing, I can't stand it, I feel like I'm going to have to stop the scene soon, but I'm just going to take one more, just one more, just one more, and see how long I can outlast it. Um, and at one point he, um, uh, specifically was insisting that I, um, uh, remember that the scene was for him and that, um, it was important that I, you know, take whatever he was dishing out or something along those lines. And what's interesting is that, you know, that's actually not quite true <laughs> in the context of the scene. However, uh, knowing that for someone who's submissive, it's generally sort of a reflexive action to say, okay, if you want more, then that's fine. Um, pushing that boundary was good because I specifically had asked him to do so. I specifically said, you know, I want you to do what you can to prolong the scene so that I have to make a decision even against your own wishes to protect myself, you know, because um, I'm not really adept at that. Um, so I got beaten with a single tail, with paddles, which I hate, fucking despise them, and um, one of the other things I'd mentioned to him was something that's on the table, something that's generally off the table for me is any play that involves my being spit on, because I, I cannot describe to you the, the, the repulsion and revulsion I feel around spitting, I don't like it, and so I said, if that's something that you feel compelled to do, I'm not taking, I'm leaving it on the table as something that can happen. Um, and so in the back of my mind, I was wondering if that was something he was going to do, knowing that it would pretty much, um, it would push me over the edge. It might not end the scene, but it would be emotionally that much more difficult at that point. So, um, I completely lost track of time. I had no idea how long we'd been in there. And, uh, there was a point where, um, he had been caning me on the bottom of my feet and I was just there, there was no way for me to process it um I had my uh I had my my I was sort of upside down on the floor with my feet tied above my head and usually when I'm processing pain or in a lot of pain you know imagining it running through me is a way for me to ground it and to work through it and because I didn't have any grounding and because I was so tired and, and so beaten up and a bit shell-shocked I didn't feel like I had a way to ground anywhere and so the, the, the beating on the bottom of my feet was distracting, not sexy, not like much about the scene had been sexy at all. Um, but it wasn't sexy, and it hurt um, unbelievably, and it felt like he could just continue doing that for an hour, um, you know. And, I, and, I, and my suspicion was that he'd hit on the thing that was just going to end the scene. And so I, I finally just said, okay, stop, that's it, stop, stop, you know. Uh, and then he insisted on hearing my safe word, and so I said, yes, red, red, I'm safe wording, I'm ending the scene. <laughs> and so he took me down, and of course the first thing, and I'm already crying, so, you know, no shock there, but the first thing I said was, I'm sorry, so I'm apologizing for safe wording on the scene, which was exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, so it was interesting to me how, um, how that was still something that, uh, was automatic for me. I, I felt like, oh, I ruined your fun. I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, and then um, Ava jumped in to do aftercare, and then Sharon, thankfully, uh, despite the fact that I didn't technically need two people for aftercare, 
but I figured it would be good to have a second person. It turned out it was good. You know, my little secret inner voice, because then Sharon was able to hang out with Gray for a bit, and that was good. Um, because tops need aftercare, too. Don't forget. People. And, um, I just cried and cried and cried and cried my eyeballs out for a while, and then and, and, um, kind of settled back into it. As to the whys of a scene like that, I explained a little bit earlier, but specifically, it's really difficult for me to feel like, um, I'm worthy or adequate or sufficient unless I do everything that the person I'm playing with wants to do. And um, I'm at a point where I'm making a lot of decisions about my life that need to benefit me, and I need to advocate very strongly for myself. And I thought that this physical reminder might be a little touchstone for me to go back to and say, remember that time when you stopped the beating because it was too much and the world didn't end and it was okay and everyone still loved you and thought you were awesome? Uh, let's think about that and keep that in mind. And it's actually kind of sunk in. You know, um, and uh, so that was that was kind of amazing, uh, having the strength to do that. I'm very proud of myself because usually I am just riddled with masochismo when I have to take more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Um, oddly enough, after the scene was over, I found out that that it had been about an hour, you know, of of just nonstop fucking brutality, and I thought, oh, it was probably I I'd, I had rounded it out at maybe 25 minutes. Um, so it was more than twice as long as that, uh, which is interesting, um, cause an hour of, you know, getting the shit kicked out of you is, is a long time, I think. Um, uh, it's long enough for me. Uh, anyway, so that was cool. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I have to say about that. Uh, and, um, again, kids don't try this at home. Unless, of course, you're a really experienced masochist, and you're playing with really experienced sadists, and all that good shit. Um, or try it at home. What the fuck? You're not going to learn until you do it, right? Uh, and I guess that's it. So, yeah. That's weird even to talk about now, I think. Um, I hadn't thought about that, but it brought back a lot of, of the pain and, and the... Um, and the satisfaction that I felt at, uh, at taking on that that task of reminding myself that saying no is also powerful, you know, and I needed a reminder of that because because um, no one else will say no for you, you know. You have to draw those boundaries for yourself, and uh, and I needed that reminder. So. <sighs> okay, before I get all fucking mushy, uh, signing off until I do this again, until I, I'm feeling really bored and narcissistic and at the same time terrified and shy about putting this shit on the internet in the first fucking place. So, uh, have a good one. Enjoy and uh, be safe.